Welcome to the Unit 2 Office Hours, and one of the first questions I'd like to address deals with the PLY library that we're using under the hood for this class to help us out with lexing and parsing. In the lectures, we talked about how to write down a token definition. You define a function t underscore something, like number, and then you'd write out the regular expression 0 through 9 plus. Then you might do a little work modifying the token value, maybe converting it from a string to an integer, and then eventually you return the token. And the basic question from students is, how does that work? What's going on? So after you write down a number of these token definitions, there's a library behind the scenes, part of the grading scripts that we're using, but also available for you to download if you'd like to try it out on your own, that gathers up all of your token definitions. One way to do this is using a technique called reflection, which actually sounds very philosophical, but is a way for a computer program to look at itself and all of its own capabilities. In essence, our Python program asks, has anyone defined any functions recently that start with T underscore? If so, the next thing we have to do is get that regular expression out of them. And it turns out that Python functions allow you to write documentation or a brief explanation at the beginning of any function. And this is sometimes a good software engineering practice. Our Python parsing library and our Python lexing library reuse this power. We're writing down this regular expression and the library is treating it as if it were documentation. We use that to get access to the regular expressions you've written down. So step one, you write down a bunch of these token definitions and then we look using reflection, for example, to find all of them. Step two, we go through all of them and ask, do they have any strings at the beginning? Anything that looks like documentation? The answer is yes, but for us it's not documentation. It's a regular expression specification. The next thing to do is convert each of those regular expressions to a finite state machine. Now I hinted at this in class, didn't give a full formal proof on how to do it, but it turns out that every one of the regular expressions, plus, star, disjunction, concatenation, can be written out in a finite state machine. For every regular expression, there's at least one, and in fact, typically infinitely many, finite state machines that accept exactly the same language. So we'll just apply that conversion in the background. But if you have a bunch of different token definitions, one for number, one for string, one for some keywords in your language, like if, then, or else, we're gonna end up with a bunch of different finite state machines. So now we have to combine them all together. And if you're willing to humor me with non-deterministic finite state machines, we could actually do that just by putting a special state at the beginning, special new start state, and having an epsilon transition go to the beginning of each of our old states. We'll glue them all together into sort of a Frankenstein's monster, an amalgamation of everything we've looked at. We're almost done, except that it's not enough for Alexa to know this string is a token. We have to know which one it is. So a real life Lexer will have one more bit of information that we didn't talk about in class. A state isn't just an accepting state, it's an accepting state with a little label. If you accept here, it was a string. If you accept in this over there, it was the token then. If you accept in this state down here, it's a number. So instead of just knowing what the accepting states are, we need to know what the accepting states are and what token each one corresponds to. All right, so you did all your token definitions. We found them all. Each one had a regular expression. We found that. We converted each of those down into finite state machines. We joined them all together. We labeled all the accepting states. And now we represent that big finite state machine internally as edges. This is sometimes formally called a transition table, but it's just like the edges encoding that we used in class. And now when it comes time to actually do lexing, to break a string down into important words and tokens, you just feed the characters of the string one at a time into that big finite state machine. It's exactly the same as the FSM SIM procedure we went over in class. It's just that their finite state machine is much bigger. But in fact, the FSM SIM code that we wrote would work just as well, even on bigger finite state machines. I just didn't show it because they're harder to draw on screen. So under the hood, this library is basically just doing a bunch of grungy details, chores, busy work in the background. We did exercises with one or two 
regular expression definitions, the library gathers them all up together in one place. So you're already familiar with all of the key concepts in making a lexical analysis library. The library just does a lot of the busy work for you. And that's the explanation.